me. I want to do a high jump to reach the ceiling. DM. Mmm, roll acrobatics. Me. I mean, shouldn't it be athletics? DM. You're using your legs. I say acrobatics. Me. What? There goes my strength, PC. This reminds me of a story a friend told me of how a GM attempted to debate him that making a bandage was a survival check instead of a medicine check because he was using the bandage to attempt to survive from his bleeding wound. Also, if I had a nickel for every time I've seen a newbie game master have a player roll their dice for every time they jumped, I'd have two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's funny that it happened twice. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to The Crow's Perch, where in addition to making dated jokes based on quotes from cartoons, I actively avoided watching until I was in my early 20s. I also tell tales of terrible tabletop tragedies. And so, without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive right into today's story. A few years ago, my regular longtime group, whom I still play with to this day, was forced to take a few months long break due to life and scheduling issues. I wanted to use this time as an opportunity to find a new party to crash in, and I went online to get into any groups that had vacant spots. I had a few bad experiences during this time, one other might get its own horror story, but it's no time for that. So I eventually found a group, playing my preferred system of good old Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. The DM seemed to be nice at first, and I had a pleasant short chat with the other players. Session Zero came, and it was fine. DM gave us a short tour about his campaign setting. We discussed the PCs and rolled up the characters. Everything seemed good so far. The group. DM. Well, the DM. Gimply. A dwarf with a mercenary career. His backstory was that he was the member of an old and prestigious dwarven clan who just lost their most important family heirloom a thousands of years old statue of their grand ancestor to some thieving goblins, and he was sent out along with dozens of other family members to find clues where it was taken and get it back at all costs. He was a stone worker and a sculptor before he became a mercenary, and was really fond of good artistry. The player himself wasn't too confrontative. Gots, a human with berserker career from the cold chaos ravaged north, speaking with an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent. He was the heir to his tribe, but lost them to a Chaos Champion, and was banished from his homeland for being too weak. He wanted to go on a quest to get stronger, go home, and get back his position as Chieftain. But when he discovered civilization, he found out he really liked it, and became a mercenary instead, with a thirst for gold, alcohol, and exotic southern women. Surf. The guy who played him couldn't decide what he wanted to play, so he asked the DM if he was okay to roll on the random table for it. He got a halfling with the peasant career. His backstory was that he was one out of dozens of siblings, and was really bored of simplistic rural life. So one day, he heard the call of adventure, and left his family, only with some clothes, a pitchfork, and a trusty sling to discover the big world and become a great warrior. He was the only character in the party with a non-martial career. Me. I rolled for a human with an apprentice wizard career. His backstory was that he was a prodigy at the Colleges of Magic, but got himself into a wrong company of friends. He got into a really bad addiction of lettuce, what made him accidentally burn down a building. It costed him his scholarship, and the college basically threw him out and refused to grant him his degree, until he could find a way to repay all of his debts. He became a mercenary out of necessity, so he could repay his debts fast. I deliberately told the DM that my character is clean since the last incident, but still terrified of what happened, and will act more extreme if he encounters anything slightly related. The DM said it was fine. The Session a week later we all joined the Discord call, and with a small delay, we began the session. We were in a small backwater town, Weissendorf. Yeah, we immediately started to call it Pissendorf, with a Shalya monastery nearby. The canoness of the monastery called for us, a group of conveniently present mercenaries, because a group of goblins showed up one day and took an extremely important relic from a monastery garden a weeping statue with incredible healing abilities. Our job was to find the gang's hideout, deal with them, and take back the statue. Simple, but good. We had zero information about where the hideout was, so the party agreed to split, gather clues in the town, 
and meet back at the marketplace. The DM was seemingly a bit sulky about our decision, but when asked if everything is okay, he said he was fine. This is where things started to go downhill. Gimply immediately jumped on the case. Since he became agitated, that this goblin clan might have some connection to the group who stole his family's statue and wanted to go to the local dwarf community to get some possible clues. Conveniently, there was a group of dwarfs right at one of the taverns, and both Gimply and the DM spent around half an hour talking about nonsensical stuff in character, while everyone else waited for their turn. I will spare you of the entire interaction, but it basically went nowhere. The NPC dwarfs gave some hints to Gimply that they might know something, and will be willing to share it for a few rounds of mead, while they talked about nonsensical things, like the infuriatingly high price of iron, but nothing else. Even the info about the price of the iron only came up because he rolled one success and a gossip check. He rolled multiple checks throughout the entire interaction, and every time, the DM told him that they just seemingly just don't trust him to share any information, forcing Gimply to spend money and get them more alcohol. So the information they didn't want to share was some minor complaints about market prices. About half an hour later, the DM broke character and smugly told Gimply that they had no relevant information, just wanted to extort him a bit, and he was fool enough not to see it. Cool. Surf tried his luck gossiping at the marketplace with the local farmers, but every time he rolled for gossip and succeeded half the time, he was told meaningless stuff, like how the price of Apple went up. There was one piece of information what he thought might be useful. People saw odd shadows dancing at night at the local windmill, and the flower tasted a bit sour lately. Surf went there to scout the area but found no signs of goblin activity, and after investigating the entire windmill, with the DM describing everything in a painfully detailed way, and requiring rolls for even lifting the top of the basket correctly, Surf succeeded, but I still don't know what would have happened if he didn't. Maybe it would have exploded. I don't know. And then another roll to see what's in it, wheat. But he found nothing. I'm not kidding. This process eats up like 40 minutes of our time, and in the end, the DM broke character again and told him that the strange shadow what he had heard about earlier was just the rival baker who snuck in at night and put some sour stuff in the flour. Surf. So, can I report the rival baker for poisoning the food supply? DM. Your character doesn't know it. Surf. Then why'd you tell me? DM. Because otherwise, you would keep stalling the story. Great. During the windmill investigation, me, Gots, and Gimply were texting and memeing constantly in the Discord while this went down, and started to see the pattern. With nothing to do, we turned to the DM. The following dialogue is just a reconstruction, as I hazily remember it from years ago. So, sorry if it's a bit overdramatic. My memories are fuzzy. DM. Gots, are you gonna do... Anything? Me. Does my character have any basic idea of where to start looking for the goblins? DM. No. Oh. Me. Then I'm just gonna sit down at the marketplace and wait. DM. Gots? Gots. I mean, can we even get any clues on where to start? We already spent an hour looking for them and found nothing. Better just to wait for them to look for us at this point. DM. Well, you just didn't search for them at the right place. Gots. Where should we search for them then? DM. Your character doesn't know that. Me. So what are we supposed to do? DM. Yes. Me. So we need to go through the entire town and everywhere around the town if they are not here. So we might get lucky and stumble onto a single clue? DM. Or you could just go where goblins usually hide. Me. Okay. Where is that place? DM, with a really smug voice. I don't know, OP. Where is that place? Me. A cave, an abandoned military base, a basement. Surf. A windmill? Me. Yeah, windmill. An abandoned castle. DM. You have no knowledge about any castle! Me. Uh... Gaunt. A few seconds later. I asked the first town guard I meet. Do you know anything about a castle nearby? DM. Yes. I mean, 
This is the part what infuriates me, because of how poorly handled it was. As all of us players agreed later, we could have just rolled for a few gossip checks, get some interesting information about the town, and someone might have mentioned the ruined castle. We would have already been intrigued by this, and immediately go and investigate the place. Ten minutes spent, probably. More if there was relevant character interaction. But we spent more than an hour with doing nothing but wasting our money on two overly secretive and elusive alcoholics and looking into exploding baskets, and only discovered the castle even existed because the DM lashed out at me for mentioning it. So we decided to gossip around again, now knowing that we should look at this abandoned castle nearby. It was less painful than the first time, although we still got comments from random NPCs about the shitty prices. I don't know why, but DM was really obsessed that every single NPC at town only complains about the price of something from apples and eggs to horseradish. But a few townsfolk and a hunter we met mentioned that the area lately is teeming with, you guessed it, goblins. Surf. Wait, my character spent half the day at the marketplace asking if where the goblins are hiding, and no one I met mentioned this place? DM. Well, you just asked the wrong people. This was how far we could get. The locals had no information about the castle, otherwise it being abandoned, and no one going there because of the goblin infestation, and how the goblins ruined the local economy, causing the prices to go up. For fuck's sake. I can't help myself, but imagine how the DM might have felt really good about tying his obsession with the struggles of the local dairy industry to the goblin plot, and how we might have just missed his incredible and elaborate foreshadowing. I don't know if it was deliberate or not. I didn't care to ask later, so take this only as my personal headcanon. Anyway, without any knowledge about the castle, we started to buy some stuff we might need later. Rope, traps, wedges, etc. There was another moment with the DM arguing that we don't know if we need a rope, but Gots told him he will buy one anyway. To what, the DM asked him how long, and he told him that about 40 meters sounds good enough. We then started to venture to the castle, and the DM described the scenery. I still feel really bad about this, because when it came to set the tone, he actually did it good enough. But, he started telling us that the castle was sitting at the top of the hill next to the main road coming into the town, and we could see it while we are walking up the road. Me, looking at the map. Next to the only road leading into the town, DM. Yes. Me, the road that the characters used to get here. He got silent for a bit, with everyone listening. DM, y you you didn't see it. Me, how? DM, you just didn't. Me, how can I miss a castle? DM, in a really high-pitched, shrieking voice, there was a storm! Me, okay. All right. We're gonna take a break for a second, because I feel like I just lost one of my last two remaining brain cells reading all this. You're telling me they didn't see a hundred foot tall structure because of a storm? A storm that you know the DM just invented as an excuse as to how they couldn't have possibly seen it in the first place? At that point, you might as well have just told the characters that they actually teleported into the town, or that they all were just hit over the head with a club, and spontaneously woke up in a cart in town after attempting to cross the border into Skyrim. This is a meandering game with effectively nothing happening, with a plot that seems to stretch further and further away as it goes on. But enough about Starfield. I see no hope about how this DM could possibly recover this game at this point, but at least there might be something to learn along the way. So, let's dive back in. This was the only answer I could give him before I muted myself and started laughing hysterically, with all three of the other players started arguing with him about how much it doesn't make any sense. The argument went nowhere, eating up another 15 minutes of our time, with DM at the end telling them to shut up and continue describing the scenery. In hindsight, I should have asked, was there a storm? We eventually reached the castle, and this is where things turned from clunky and funny to infuriating. We investigated the place and found clues about goblins being present nearby. 
with half-eaten apples, oh no, the local apple stocks, in one room, and a giant crack on the roof in the basement, seemingly leading to a cave under the complex. Turns out we needed that rope after all. We let the rope into the crack and started our descent, only to notice at the end that 40 meters wasn't enough, with the DM smugly telling us that we're just short by five. DM, with a smug voice. So, what are you gonna do? Gots, we go back to Pissendorf and buy some extra rope. DM, well, you can't. Gots, why? DM, the rope trader is closed. Gots, then we wait until we will open and come back tomorrow. DM, he won't. Me, pretending to be worried. Oh, is he sick or dead? Gots, looks like we can't come back here until he gets better. Surf, wait, we were his last customers probably. Shouldn't we go to his funeral instead? Me, yeah, let's go to the funeral tomorrow. DM, there is no funeral. He is not dead. Me, oh, he got resurrected. Gots, our lord and savior. DM, do you get down or not? Gots, we still need extra rope. DM, no, you don't. The ground is right beneath you. Me. Holy rope trader. We asked for it, and he granted us with a longer rope and a ground closer. After some memeing with the GM sulking a bit, we get down the rope and start to investigate. Turns out we are in some secret dungeon built by some old lord who is a vampire in secret blah blah blah. Bunch of trivial knowledge which we really didn't care for at this point. In advice to any DM, if you want your players to stay invested in your story, maybe don't open with describing how a flocking windmill works for 40 minutes. We eventually found the goblin sitting in a creepy campfire room and eating some weird mushrooms from a creepy vampire table with a statue sitting on top of it. We immediately flagged the combat encounter. Initiative rolled, finally, some action. That might redeem the past three hours a little bit. Oh boy, you wish. If anything, it was the worst part. The first few minutes started actually good. Gots went into a frenzy and chopped off the legs of a goblin, with Gimply piercing one with a crossbow bolt, and Surf heroically hitting the wall with a failed slingshot. Then it came to my turn, and the DM started describing the mushrooms on the creepy vampire table, and ordered me to make a willpower roll. I failed, and the DM told me, that my character feels his addiction coming up and having an irresistible urge to consume the funny mushrooms. Me. What the hell, man? DM. You said your character is an addict. Me. Was an addict. He is trying to stay clean. DM. Well, he failed. You can eat the mushrooms or try to resist the urge, but it will cost you half your action to hold back. Me so I can either move or cast in my turn, but not both. DM, sorry, you brought an addict. Just to make it more infuriating, the goblins were eating madcap mushrooms, and as I think about it, they didn't show any signs of being under the influence of them. Huh, anyway, this stuff would make my character go berserk and hurl towards the enemy in frenzy with an increased toughness and strength modifier, but lowered intelligence and willpower. But I brought a wizard, meaning if I ate the mushrooms, I would heroically jump the goblins in a glorious rage with a stick, without being able to use my spells and be completely useless. Or I can resist the urge, and as told above, lose half of my actions, with that only half of my opportunities to be useful. Then we came to the statue zerking. Frenzy in this rule set says that you have to immediately attack the closest enemy to your character. It gives you a buff to your strength, but nukes your intelligence, as long as the frenzy keeps on going. With a goblin dead, Gots wanted to jump on the nearest goblin he could see, but the DM stopped him. DM, roll an intelligence check. Gots, uh, why? DM, you are in a frenzy. You can't tell who was enemy and who was a friend, unless your character can think rationally for a second. Gots rolls and fails. Gots, okay, so I failed. But the next goblin is still closer than Gimply. DM, 
You have to attack the statue. Got. What? DM. You can't tell if the statue is an enemy or not. Got. But this is the quest item. I'm sure my character will have enough sense to notice that this is the thing we came here for and won't attack it. DM. You have to attack the statue. So Gots attacks the statue, hits, rolls damage, and the DM describes how a part of the statue breaks away with a loud cracking noise and how the mindless berserker keeps vandalizing the thing in bloodless rage. Behold, mortals, as my inhuman rage can only be satisfied with gypsum and mortar. After this, the combat turns into a hellscape. Gimply has to step in as the frontline character, because for the next couple turns, Gots has to repeat the intelligence checks each time. And since he's already not too high intelligence level, was nuked by the frenzy, under 23 on a D100, he always fails the checks. One check he missed by only a few digits, so we called out the DM. Gantz, 25 to 23. Dude, I'm vandalizing the statue for the last three turns. I only missed with two. Surely my character could see now what he's doing. Can I switch to another target? DM, okay, I will allow it, but you still failed, so you have to hit Gimply. Who is the closest to you right now? Gantz, there are three goblins standing right next to him. DM. Okay, I will allow a coin flip. On a head, you hit Gimply. On tails, you attack one of the goblins. Gots. There are three goblins next to him. Couldn't it at least be a D4 roll? DM. Uh, no. Gimply. Don't worry, I can handle him for a few more turns. Gots. Looks like I'm less dangerous if I keep attacking the statue then. The combat goes down after this, with Gots repeatedly failing the intelligence checks and me skipping half my turns just to move, because suddenly, I had an urge to consume murder mushrooms. We come out on top, with Gimply being in a really bad shape after he had to tank half a dozen goblins, me being unable to help half the times, Gots being useless chewing on the arm of a statue, and Surf being a non-combat character couldn't really provide more support than sometimes distracting a goblin with his pitchfork, or sometimes getting a lucky hit with his sling. But we won eventually, and started to loot the place, finding nothing worthwhile. Not even expensive cheese, eggs, or horseradish. The holy statue reduced to pieces and as the DM tells us, that our main prize is a chest full of madcap mushrooms. Me and Gantz tried to salvage some of the situation, and we had an attempt to roleplay a bit about my ex-addict wizard being terrified of the stuff, and arguing to just incinerate it, with Gantz arguing to just sell it, and that he doesn't care much about who buys it. The in-character argument got a bit heated, and both me and Gantz enjoyed it, when the DM stepped in and told us to stop flocking arguing. And, I quote, DM. If you have a problem with each other, you should just take it out and settle it down like a man. Just a reminder, we were on Discord. Both me and Gots told him that we are just arguing in character, but he hand waved that away like nothing happened. It really killed the mood, and we just did a shortcut where both of us agreed to take the funny chest to the head of the town militia for a reward. We also tried to piece together the statue, but it was hopeless. So we decided to lie that the goblins already smashed it when we got there, even giving it a few lashes with the goblin weapons and dropping it down a stairwell, and just hoping the cannoness won't notice it and gives us at least a partial reward. We went back to town. The militia captain tried to arrest us for alleged drug dealing. But after we mentioned that we handled the goblins, he gave us our freedom as a reward. Before we re-entered the monastery, however, Gots left his axe outside and came in with the makeshift club as a dummy weapon. So the canoness won't be able to tell that it was him who vandalized the statue. The canoness was furious and immediately figured out we did it because he looked at one of the pieces and somehow CSI style, figured out that it was Gots who did it, because she remembered every detail of us, including how his axe looked like. She was even able to tell that the damage caused by the goblin blades 
was made later. I don't know how. We deliberately tried to mask the earlier damage, and chastise us for not just destroying the holy statue, but also lying to her. And now, we were banished from the town for it. And for drug dealing as well. Not sure how she did get the info about this, because we immediately went to her, after we left the crate at the town hall with the guards. The DM did this in a really smug and triumphant tone, like he got us. And this is where the session ended. After session. After a few seconds of process, we were just off. Gimply excused himself, told DM the session was okay, and left unceremoniously. Me, Gots, and Surf, however, got into a heated argument with DM. It was long and painful, with DM refusing any wrongdoings from his part, and blamed us for ruining the entire plot. It was the point when Surf said he had enough of it, and dropped off. Turns out, he expected that all of us would just go to the woods after speaking with the Canoness, because that's the place where goblins usually dwell, and he had a bunch of clues prepared for how we would get near to the castle. Find the crack in the floor, realize we need a rope, go out and find one with a creepy old guy nearby in the forest who was supposed to be a clever plot hook for later. Yeah, when he asked for the length of the rope specifically, he did it so he could just tell a different height for the cave, because he expected we just climb back and go out into the forest to look for some extra rope, and not just go back into town and get some where we know we can get it. We also asked why did the town militia try to punish us after we just cleared out a goblin nest, and instead of selling it to some criminals, we turned a chest full of murder truffles right at their table. He said he had this idea that we were trying to sell it, and already had a ring of local drug lords coming after us, while we had tried to deal with the town militia as well. I reminded him that the premise he promised was doing odd jobs and being mercenaries in some backwater rural region of the Empire, and not playing the medieval fantasy version of Breaking Call Saul. Okay, this is probably a typo, but I'm just keeping this in. But he hand-waved it and said that we are still on track, because the local drug kingpin will hear that we are labeled as drug dealers, and he will come for us. And I can't emphasize it enough how gaslighty his behavior was during the entirety of the argument, of how stupid we were for doing this and doing that, how we ruined the session, how we acted out of character, etc. The out of character part was aimed at me most, because I refused to give in to my urge and stuff my face with the funny fungus. I was too tired to argue with that. In the end, both me and Gots told him to go flock himself and dropped out of the campaign. Later I learned from Gots, who was a friend to Surf, that DM tried to salvage it, with getting three new players and trying to get back Gimply and Surf, telling them that my character died of overdosing. Gots's character was arrested by the Inquisition for destroying a holy relic, but they just blocked him and moved on. I didn't really get to play with them again, but sometimes I get in touch with Gots for some small talk. I don't know what happened to the new group, if the DM ever got a chance to get one started. The end. It is genuinely astonishing to me that this game master managed to foreshadow like four different plot hooks, and yet without even flinching, he refused to give the players any alternative path to allow them to discover the goblin's hideout. This DM railroaded the story with a plot hook that could only be found by pixel hunting, allowed their players to break off the rails only to call them stupid for doing so, conflated marijuana usage with being addicted to f***ing ketamine, and then after all of this, he kills off the OP and a fellow player's character for the grave crime of arguing with him about not being able to read his goddamn mind as a prerequisite for playing in his game. Ladies and gentle birds, boy kissers and goth tomboy hooters enjoyers, I think we found him. The absolute worst GM ever. Worthy of as many accolades as Baldur's Gate 3 is going to get in the Game Awards. It's him. John RPG Horror Story. Found moments before he RPG'd all over this horror story. And with that, that's where we'll end today's stories. And if you like today's stories and would like to see more of them, then please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel. And if you made it this far, then why not leave a comment? Can't think of a comment? Then leave the comment 
Horror Story Awards. That way I know you made it to the end of today's video. And once again a special thank you to my patrons whose names should be on screen right now. Your continued support keeps the channel going and I genuinely don't know where I'd be without you guys. When I help a bird buy some Christmas gifts, then hey, drop a dollar this month and help support the Crow's Perch. You'll be glad you did. And with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time as the crow flies. <laughs>